Why does it feel like somebody hates me? Why would I sing that? You already know why. You know what we're staring the barrel of Monday night. Prime time. Bears football. As if there isn't enough suffering already this year, we got to make it worse by allowing the entire country to see this shit in prime time as the sole game going on. What do we do to deserve this? You know what? No, no, no. You know what? If you're dumb enough to be a best football fan, you deserve every bit of this and more. And especially if you are idiotic enough, if you are football tart enough, if you are bears down tart enough to tune in of your own volition and choice and free will on Monday night to watch this inevitable shit show of primetime bears football for three plus. All that you fucking get, straight up the vag, straight up the booty hole. That's what you get. God. At least it'll be the last primetime game this year, am I right? Oh, God. Speaking of that, let's talk about this matchup. We got the Bears and Vikings NFC North game Monday night. And for the Bears, last week was another glorious example of Bears football. And the beautiful thing about Bears football is it can mean so many different things and it's got versatility and variety and some volatility because one week it can represent one thing, the next week it can represent another thing. Last week against the Lions, they're up 26 to 14 with 420 left. How could they possibly lose this game? Well, they're actually gonna fucking win this one. Of course not. They're gonna find a new way to lose and lose 31 to 26 by giving up two touchdowns at three plus minutes and then the big strip sack of Justin Fields that resulted in the safety for the fucking 25 yard line. You're gonna have those that hang on to, well, Fields was better in that one. That ain't saying much, folks. Well, he we went over 100 yards rushing. Whoopee shit. Still only threw for 169 yards. There were a couple of nice throws in there, certainly. Some more like credible NFL starting quarterback throws, but one game does not make up for two plus seasons of and that's what you got here. Perfectly describes the Bears this year, doesn't it? Sitting at three and eight. And for some reason that is unbeknownst to me, head coach Matt Eberflus, offensive coordinator, the gutless one, put him up. Put him up. I'm Luke Getze. I'm the offensive coordinator. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm respected around the league. That doesn't make the league stupid. It just means everybody else doesn't know. The fans don't know nothing. First and ten. Catch him off guard. Halfback dive. Second and ten. Sweep. Third and ten. Halfback screen. <laughs> Somehow these assholes are still employed. Ryan Poles too. Because he's the one that fucking built this shitty team. And hired these dumb dick coaches. From the coward to the freaking brainless scarecrow that is Matt Eberflus. Oh, it's all about execution. No, asshole, it's all about coaching. Fucking idiot. Speaking of idiots, Matt Eberflus, of course, is 0-9 against the NFC North. Apparently, Ryan Poles. Like, it just feels like one of those statements that will live in infamy forever, right? We're going to take the North and never give it back. Well, what did you take, motherfucker? You took the toilet bowl and you ain't giving it back because you're 0-9 against the NFC North. And three more matchups this year that you could potentially lose. Mercifully for Bears fans, after this Monday night debacle, you're going to have the last, it's the last game before the bye, so you get a week off of Bears football. But of course ESPN and the NFL want to make us all suffer and have to be up late Monday night in order to watch this shit. Whatever. Meanwhile, for the Minnesota Vikings, several weeks ago this felt like it was going to be a lost season for this team, but they turned it around. They had won five in a row. Uh, but then you had that tough loss last week against the Broncos, up 20 to 15 with a little over three minutes to go, and they proceed to allow the Broncos to move 75 yards down the field. Russell Wilson hits the game-winning touchdown to Cortland Sutton, and there you go. So as the team had built up quite quite a bit of momentum, really would have helped them if they'd have won that game, but they didn't. So now they sit at six and five and second in the NFC North in the sixth spot in the NFC playoff race. They made the trade a couple weeks ago to bring in Josh Dobbs to replace Kirk Cousins after his Achilles injury. So it's now Josh Dobbs' team for the rest of the season. And you look at the Vikings here, you know, it's possible, probable that they're not going to play Justin Jefferson in this one. 
Uh, probably want to give him one more week, actually two more weeks, because you figure the Vikings have the, their bye week coming up after this game as well. Want to make sure that Justin Jefferson is fully healed from his hamstring injury going into the home stretch of the season. But the Vikings really need this one. They really do. Especially if they sit out Justin Jefferson. To be able to go into this one, win, move to 7-5, and five, go into their bye, give Jefferson almost two weeks to heal, knowing that their end-of-season stretch is not easy. They've got three of their last five on the road. You know, Three divisional games, including two against the Lions. There's a lot that could be done for the Vikings yet this year here. They really need this game against the Bears. Earlier this season, the Bears lost to the Vikings 19-13 in an ugly-ass contest. Kirk Cousins in the Vikings offense was sloppy, that's for sure. And then you look at the Bears. Justin Fields went down early in the second half with a thumb injury. And both himself and Tyson Bagent struggled against Brian Flores in the varied blitz packages that they showed on defense for the Vikings. You know, and you would expect to see more of the same this go-around. For the betting odds, the Vikings are three-point favorites. The over-under on this one is 43. Oh, boy. 43 points involving a Bears game in prime time. Bears football in prime time. NFC North matchup. And we're given the over under 43. Courageous you be. Courageous you be. Keys to victory here for the Bears. DJ Moore. Get him 10 plus targets. He had eight targets in the first match. You've got to give him 10 or more. Get him involved. God forbid you run any fucking slant pattern. Uh, but you got to get him involved. Throw the ball to DJ Moore. Good things happen for this offense. Throw the ball to DJ Moore. Also offensively, get more moving pockets and max protect to counter the Vikings blitz packages. Move Justin Fields around. Get the Vikings blitz timing off. Get them confused in terms of what the Bears are going to do. Find unique ways to be able to protect Fields and give him a little bit more time. Get him on his feet. Get him in a rhythm. That's when he plays better. And then defensively, you need Montez Sweat and Yannick Ngakwe to generate some damn edge pressure. And I'm not talking about Montez Sweat generating half-ass pressure against backs and tight ends or getting a sack because he's completely unblocked. I mean, this is a guy who traded a second-round pick for and then gave elite edge rusher money to. This needs to be a Montez Sweat statement game. It's not going to be, of course, because Ryan Poles is a fucking idiot and went after the wrong guy for the wrong reasons, for the wrong amount of compensation. But they've got to get some pressure on Josh Dobbs here. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, work the middle of the field of the passing game. Get your backs, TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, KJ Osborne, whoever it is. Work the middle of the field, the short and intermediate area of the middle of the field. The Bears have been vulnerable there all year, and that shit ain't. Then also when you look at the passing game, you know, especially for a Vikings team that's not great running the ball, and the Bears are actually pretty good stopping the run. You got to get Jordan Addison on Tyreek Stevenson early and often and then go to it early and often. Tyreek Stevenson has been pretty bad in coverage this year, pretty brutal. Until he proves he can stop you, you got to go attack him early and often. And then defensively, blitz up the middle while keeping contain. That's going to be a key here. The fields really struggle with the Vikings pressure. The offensive line of the Bears struggle with the Vikings blitz and pressure the first go round. Blitz, but blitz more up the middle, especially on the left side where they're weaker. And then keep contain. Gotta keep contain. Because otherwise Fields can will run. And he'll run for a lot, right? Which doesn't necessarily mean the bear is gonna win shit, but it could be hard to get out of third long situations. You're blitzing, but then Justin Fields is running 15 yards for a first down. I expect this one to be ugly, similar to the first one. I'll take the Vikings 20, Bears 17. You know, good luck to all of us that are choosing to watch this shit on Monday night. Frankly, we deserve the pain and punishment because we are clearly all morons.